In this design criteria lesson, we're going to carry on with part three of our component selection. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to apply calculations to select components and make informed design decisions. In this lesson, we're going to be focusing on the amount of thrust provided by our motor and how our battery choices are going to affect both the lift as well as the flight time. So the DYS motor that we're talking about here is the MR2205-2750KV. We already know that the 22 is the diameter of the stator, the 05 is the height of the stator, and the 2750, or constant velocity, is multiplied by the voltage to give us the max RPM unloaded. But what does all this mean? Well, DYS provides these thrust charts with their motors so we can reference the motor how our battery choices are going to affect things like the thrust, as well as which propellers that we want to choose. The first thing that we need to consider is the mass. Now I've picked out a couple different batteries that we're going to talk about. The smallest three cell battery that we're going to talk about gives us roughly a total mass of 814 grams. The largest four cell that we're going to talk about gives us a total mass of roughly 1130 grams. So at this stage, we're not too concerned with the amperage or the amount of current that the battery can push out. We're solely going to focus on the three cell and four cell differences and how they apply to the thrust. So first, let's take a look at the example at 50% input with a five by four and a half prop on a three cell system. So the three cell or 11.1 volt system will provide 371 grams of force. Now this is times four because we have a quadcopter and four motors. So the total is going to be 1484. We need 814 grams bare minimum to be able to get off the ground. And we have 1484. This is not quite the two to one ratio that I'm looking for, but it is enough for us to get up in the air and fly. Now, when we talk about our thrust ratio or the amount of force that we provide, as opposed to the amount of weight that we need to lift, I like to shoot for a two to one at 50% throttle in this design case. This is going to give us plenty to fly and enough room that if we go up to 100% throttle, we're going to have great maneuverability and we can get somewhere fast. But let's take a look at some other numbers. For the same prop on the same motor, but a four cell system or 14.8 volts, we now have 561 grams of force. Multiply that by four, we get 2244 or 2244. Now we have to lift 1130. We're pretty close to that two to one ratio. We're at about 1.95, so this is pretty good. The input at 14.8 volts is giving us a lot more output. Even though we have to lift more mass, we can still account for it and get a better thrust ratio. But now let's take a look at what it means to do a three cell system with a six inch prop as opposed to a five. So at 50%, we're now getting 481 grams of force. So this is 1924 once we multiply it all out, and we're still only lifting 814 grams. So this gives us the best thrust ratio, but we have to be careful when we talk about this because instead of needing eight amps of current at 50% on the five inch prop, we now need 12 amps of current. So if we factor in the amount of current needed for both of these setups, at 11.1 .1 volts, 50% on a five inch prop, we need eight amps. However, at 11.1 .1 volts on a six inch prop, we need 12 amps. So we're actually drawing quite a bit more current. So even though we're lifting more and we're not really increasing the mass, we're not gonna have nearly the same amount of flight time. So let's take into account the rest of the equation. We now wanna look at the battery and how that's going to affect things. So we wanna take a look at the difference in mass. We wanna take a look at the difference in the voltage and the current. So the three batteries that we're talking about here are all Turnigy. The first one is two 1500 milliamps wired together. The second one is two 2200 milliamps wired together. And the third one is a four cell system with 2650 milliamp hours wired together. By wiring two batteries together, we're able to double the current but keep the same voltage. So this is a nice way for us to increase our capacity, increase our flight time, and be able to add a bit more mass to the system to get that roughly 50 to 66% mass being part of our batteries. So as we look at this, our smaller three cell system is 214 grams for two batteries. Our larger four cell system is 530 grams. 
And right in the middle, we have 4.4 amp hours in a three cell system at 376 grams. Now remember, all three cell systems are gonna be about 11.1 volts. The four cell system, however, is 14.8. So as we look at these three cases, we wanna take a close look at not only the difference in the mass, but how the voltage is going to change the overall equation. So the next column that we're looking at is going to be the five by four and a half or the size of our prop. I omitted the six by four and a half prop because we're really planning for a five inch prop here. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to be able to configure the battery. Now there was no six by four and a half prop shown on a 14.8 volt setup. Now that's because the 14.8 volt is not going to be spinning that six inch prop. Ideally, DOIS wants you to run a 5-inch prop on that system. Because the 5-inch prop was available for both the 3-cell and the 4-cell, I want to make sure I stick to something that allows me the flexibility to run the 4-cell batteries or run the 3-cell batteries. So you, now you're wondering, where did these numbers come from? 14 amps, 20 amps, and 18 and a half. Well, if we reference the thrust chart, we can take a look at each of these numbers. First, we have to lift 800 grams. So if we divide that by four, each motor needs to be at least 200 grams of force. Now I do want to note that we're taking the bare minimum total mass and we're using that as our thrust. We're going to need more thrust for us to actually get off the ground and fly, but this is a great way for us to baseline everything and take a look at the raw numbers. So in order for each motor to be able to lift 200 grams, on a five by four and a half prop on a three cell 11.1 volt system, we fall between the 25 and 50% input. We're pretty close to 25% because that gives us 175 grams, while the five by four and a half prop on a 50% setup gives us 371. So I estimated this at about three and a half amp input to give us 14 amps when we multiply it by all four motors. Now, as we look at this, our battery is only providing 12 amps, and you might be wondering how I arrived at that number. Well, remember the amp hour value is how much amperage it's gonna supply for one hour. With our battery, if we take three amps for one hour, we can provide roughly six amps for half an hour or 12 amps for 15 minutes. And again, to simplify all the numbers, I'm taking 15 minutes of what these batteries can supply and I'm taking a look at how that compares to the amperage input we need just for the bare minimum. Now remember when we talked about our design criteria, I wanted at least 15 minutes of flight time. So the 15 minutes supply on the battery will help us understand how that's gonna work. If we take a look at the larger capacity three cell system, instead of three amps, we now have 4.4 amps, but we have to lift 975 grams. If we divide that by four, we have to have 244 grams of lift for each motor. Now again, that falls between the 25 and 50%, but it's quite a bit farther away from the 25%. So I estimated about five amps or 20 amps for all four motors. Now the larger capacity battery, of course, gives us more amperage, but it only supplies 17.6 amps for 15 minutes. We need 20 amps, we're only getting 17.6. We're still not quite there for 15 minutes of flight time. Now if we take a look at the four cell system, we have to lift quite a bit more. Each motor has to be able to provide 282 grams of force. Now on a four cell system, we're now at 14.8 volts, the same prop, and we're right about 25% input. Now this is great because we have 280 grams for each motor, and we're only pulling 4.66 amps of current. If we take a look at this, the battery is gonna provide 21.2 amps because it's got larger amperage. So 21.2 amps for 15 minutes, we only need 18 and a half to fly. This is gonna give us enough amperage to be able to fly for 15 minutes. Now, the way that we can address this entire problem is we can take a look at the total mass, we can take a look at the battery setup and how that's gonna affect our flight time. With less mass, we need less amperage to fly for the same amount of time. Because we're talking about the amount of thrust we need and how much throttle input that's gonna be, the four cell system looks like it's gonna give us the best bang for the buck. It can be run at 25%, it can give us enough thrust to get off the ground, and we still have 
50, 75, and 100% throttle to get quite a good thrust ratio out of this. At 280 grams, that is a one-to-one -one thrust ratio at 25% throttle. When we go to 50, we have 561 per motor, 75, we've got 908, and as we go down the list at 100% throttle, each motor is providing 965 grams of thrust. Now that means that one motor can almost provide enough thrust to get off the ground. This is giving us a roughly four to one thrust ratio. This is gonna let us be really maneuverable in the air, get to where we need to fast, and then we can reduce the amount of throttle and hover and just keep the throttle at the lower roughly 25% and survey certain areas. So overall, when you start to design something like this, whether it's a quadcopter or anything, you wanna take a look at this type of data, you wanna compare your options, and you wanna figure out what the best route's gonna be. Now I've actually built this setup on a three amp hour system on a three cell battery. And I can tell you that from my experience, I was able to fly for about eight to 10 minutes on this setup some maneuvers, but mostly hovering. So these calculations for 15 minute supply at 12 amps, requiring about 14 amps, it's pretty realistic. It gives us a good idea of where we need to be. So this tells me that if we decide to go with a four cell system with the larger capacity batteries, we're gonna be able to fly for probably about 20 minutes on that setup. So at this point, we've given you a lot of information on how to pick components to design a quadcopter. Now, as we move forward, we're gonna be starting our build by using the DYS motors we talked about. We're gonna start with the smaller capacity batteries, the three amp hour, two battery setup, which is the lightest setup that we have. And we're gonna take a look at how that translates to our real world flight time. Being able to keep the same propellers, to keep the same motors, and simply upgrade the batteries to larger capacity four cell systems is going to give us quite a bit more flight time. So we know that we have that option to increase the batteries as long as we design it so that the batteries are centered on our components and we center all the mass on those batteries. Now, again, we're looking at roughly 50 to 66% of our mass coming directly from the batteries. So they will have the greatest effect on the balance of our components. As we move forward in our course, it's important to remember all these values, remember where they came from and how they apply to what we're doing even though the course is laid out so we use all the same components that we're talking about, it's perfectly acceptable for you to take a look at these and figure out better components to use, whether it's a different motor, whether you're planning for a different battery system, or simply sourcing different components so that they're lighter or easier to manufacture or put into our design. I will give out a full parts list and with this course I've also supplied an Excel spreadsheet that has all of this information on it as well. So you can take a look at that, the components that we're using, and how that correlates to what we're doing here in this course.